people often say that the Pokemon games have been losing a lot of its patented soul over the generations. We went from cool sprites with dynamic poses and personalities to some of the best looking animated sprites on the platform to basic 3D models that just kind of stand around. And then Sword and Shield happened and that tree, oh boy. But I think there's another part of the Pokemon franchise that has lost even more soul as time's gone on. And it's not what anyone would expect. It's the Seek and Find books. I have a lot of them here. All three of the Gen 1 books in one. Fire Red and Leaf Green. Let's find Pokemon Crystal. Let's find them all. The search for Zoroark. And then if you flip it over, it's the other book too. That's pretty fun. Uh, and then the most recent one I have is a Pokemon Seek and Find Legendary Pokemon. <laughs> Hey, Future Loxton here. Uh, thanks to the power of sponsors and Patreon and putting my cat on a very strict diet, uh, I was able to find and afford the uh, Gen 7 and Gen 8 books as well. Uh, we'll get to these, but let me tell you, they're the worst. Let's get started real quick with Let's Find Pokemon Special Complete Edition. First of all, this cover, look at that art. This Pikachu is adorable. There's so many things happening. Ash is up here having lunch with Pikachu. Mr. Mime, Machop, and Graveler are going bowling with a Voltorb. Pidgeotto's running off with Chansey's Execute. Another page, like, I, I love all of this classic Gen 1 art. It's all so pretty. Look, Alakazam's doing that scooping game, that fairs and carnivals where you scoop fish. Chansey got back at Pidgeotto. And like, it all just looks so good. They're making a bonfire. And this is the cutest Diglett I have ever, ever seen. There's so much soul in here and you can just keep turning the pages and finding more. Why is Rhydon giving Growlithe a walk? Why? Oh, because it's cute. Jinx is a beauty pageant person. There's so many cool, fun things. It's, it's just like all the Where's Waldo books. Do you remember those? Yeah, it's just a big crowd of people, but like there's things happening. There's humor. There's fun art stuff happening. Meowth's driving a helicopter. Got a bunch of Pokemon falling out of Pokeballs. I see, look here, Jigglypuff is mailing a letter with the carrier Pidgey to Clefairy. Next page, Pidgey's still flying with it. Clefairy's over here, completely nonchalantly. Oh, it's that scene from the anime. Oh, but there's the carrier Pidgey, it bumped into Charizard. Oh no, and it dropped the letter. Now Pidgey's just a cuckoo clock. Now there's a fun dynamic angle. I mean, look at this. The Kangaskhan from the previous one, like Kangaskhan's like, whoa, what's this? It's a letter on the floor. And now Kangaskhan has the letter and it's trying to get it to Clefairy. Ah, oh, movie theater. And Kangaskhan got the letter stolen by Lickitung. This page is also a maze. I loved when all the Where's Waldo things also had little mini games like that. But look, Lickitung is trying to get the, tongue, the thing off his tongue. And then Lickitung finally gets it out of its mouth and it gets to Clefairy. Graveler's eating potato chips and they're trading Pokemon, which is a little weird, but maybe, 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 they're, tra maybe they're trading humans. Oh, Clefairy's reading the letter from Jigglypuff while there's a massive stinking explosion happening. Again, cutest ditto. And now Clefairy's having a video chat with Jigglypuff about the letter. There's a whole narrative, and this isn't even the only narrative. There's several narratives. There's just so much soul, and then like you get to the end of the book, and there's like more things to find. It's so good and pure and fun, and then we get to Gen 2. Let's find Pokemon Crystal. Oh, and one more gift from Future Me. It's today's sponsor, Sakurako and Tokyo Treat. Each of them are monthly subscription boxes filled with goodies from Japan. Each Tokyo Treat box contains up to 20 of the best limited edition seasonally flavored snacks only found in Japan. Sugoi Summer is this month's theme. Let's make banana smile. It's a banana castella and it just says banana on it. Let's make banana smile. That is the banana -iest. Banana Castilla I have ever smelled. All the like banana paste in it. And Sakurako is for the more refined palate. Each Sakurako box includes 20 traditional artisan snacks that pair well with the included tea and a nice little Japanese tableware item. Both boxes also include little booklets that explain what everything is and why they are so culturally significant. It's an educational journey through taste. Always a fun adventure. It's like my perfect level of spice, actually. And if you order by July 31st, you'll receive the same boxes I showed here. And when you order, be sure to use the coupon code LOXTON for $5 off. This time I have to give the individual win to these chocolate bears from Tokyo Treat. Honorable mention to the cold soba ramen. It's so good. I've never had anything like this before. But the overall win goes to Sakurako, which gave me a handful of flavors and textures I have never experienced before. I love it. That is sugar. Link below again, and thanks again to them for sponsoring. Let's find Pokemon Crystal. Still good.
good. All of the art is hand done for this book. And it's still showing a big crowded scene with like a bunch of stuff happening. Oh, I like this. And I like the red Gyarados. Like there still are interactions happening. Clefable is peeing on Wigglytuff. But you can tell just by looking at it, there's a lot fewer interactions happening. And also the scale gets off pretty quick. Like look at this Teddy Ursa. It is bigger than the pile of swine and it is on top of this house. It is bigger. It could not fit in this house. Like the scale is so off. Look at these guys. How, why? What's going on? They should be so tiny. Vertical one, okay, those are fun. This one's fine. Things happening and things interacting, and it's, it's, it's good, it's fine. There's still just so much space, but at least they're hand-drawn, it's fun and interactive, and there's more things to do than just what each page was saying that there is to do. Let's go to Gen 3. Got the fire red, leaf green, and emerald. Let's start with the leaf green. I like this little aquarium. Hi, there's leaf. And it's all nice and hand drawn. But look, look at this. The, the, how are they all here? How are they sitting in front of the trees like this? There's not even shadows. How? That, that's, a, that's a cliff. Don't dream. That's a cliff you're standing on and not putting a shadow on. None of this makes any sense. They're just placed. They're put on the page. At least, though, at least they're hand drawn. Let's, let's go to Emerald. That's a lot of Spinda. It's fine. Oh, there are not, like, it's Gen 3. There are three generations worth of Pokemon now, and still most of them are uh, Gen 1 Pokemon, and uh, also there's so few Pokemon. There's so much empty space in these. Look at this. Like, at least this one makes sense. It's, it's not standing on top of trees or being gigantic standing on top of a distant house. It's, they're all jumping down the waterfall. This is fine. This is fine. I really, I really like this Venusaur. Four. Minus points for that. But at least you can see there are still some narratives going on. Why not playing hide and seek with Plusle the whole time? It's good, it's fun. Uh, just realized I don't have a Gen 4 book, but let's, let's go to the Gen 5. Pokemon, find them all. This is stock image art. This wasn't drawn. This was thrown together in Photoshop and not even well. First of all, <laughs> The scale of so many of them is off. So several of them aren't even the same art style. Look at the leafy on here, those outlines, compared to the Torchic behind it. It's so thin, you can't even see the outlines. Same over here. This Turtwig, you can't even see its outlines, and it's right next to this Bidoof with, like, Ikad. Maybe there is some custom art in here, because I've never seen this particular Bidoof. This is literally just the stock art. Like, the stuff that you find on wiki sites. Copy-pasted, mostly. Again, some of these I have not seen before. Like this Ludicolo. I do not like this Ludicolo. This page is a cool effect at least. I like I like the way they did the water here. I'll give them that. But again, this is literally just the anime stock art for, for most of these. They're not doing anything. They're not interacting at all. They're just, here's a bunch of flyers in the air. Here's a bunch of swimmers in the water. What is wrong with this Kranidos? Okay, maybe they got it together. Maybe by the time the next gen happens, they figured out, hey, people didn't like this as much. Let's do um, Pokemon Seek and Find Legendary Pokemon. It's still stock art. It, it, it's still stock art, everybody. In fact, I think it's worse. Because again, it still has the shadow problem. It still has the outline problem. But it, it, the thing that makes it really, really bad is uh, it, here's Greninja just like sort of standing there, being a Greninja standing there. Uh, there's Greninja just sort of standing there, being a Greninja standing there. What is wrong with this Garchomp? Ew. Oh, uh, that Lucario, I think. I, yep, that Lucario. That Lucario. Oh, jeez. Wait. Uh, there's Greninja. Like, they knew Greninja was going to be popular. They did not need to use the same art of Greninja in every single page of this. But also, like, look, look. There's absolutely no shadows on any of them. They're not in the background at all. They're just photoshopped on top of it. That's a repeat of four of the exact same Beedrill. Like, at least when there were repeats in the old books, they were all individually hand-drawn, doing something different. Even if only minor, it goes a long way. Holy mo- what's this? Oh, the stickers. At least it comes with stickers. I will never get used to that. Uh, hey, Gen- Gen 7 time, right? Where's Pikachu? Found him. Anyway. Hmm. The Gen 5 book had like the same Greninja on every single page. At least it wasn't multiple of them. Like, it had those B drill, but like, at least it wasn't the same, sorry, the same executor. There's so many more fire type Pokemon that fly than just Talonflame. 
like you're mixing the newer art with the gross, like, Gen 1 Arcanine. You have a gross Gen 1 Arcanine twice. Ugh. It's disgusting and bad. And, like, it has the same problems. The lighting's all off. Spinda is not that big. It's actually gross. And none of them are, like, properly interacting because, again, it's just Photoshop lay on a page. This 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 page is the worst defender, honestly. Count them. You got one, two, three pre-marina. At least this one's mostly covered. But like, one is bad enough. The background, it doesn't even look like it's the same art. Like it's blurry. You can see the like JPEG artifacting on the waterfall. It's so it's like a low quality Photoshop brush that they just clicked a couple times on it. It doesn't fit. Like, does this Beldum even have outlines? I guess it does, but it's they shrunk it so much you can't tell. It's all bad. It's just also very very bad. And like, there's Pikachu. Wow. You know, the rudest place to always hide Waldo is like where the book Crease is and they just did that with the Pikachu. Oh gross, I had to look at it. It's just ugly and bad and cheap and like official product. You, they had to put that there because it certainly doesn't look or feel like one. When you see a Pokemon product, you usually... Oh, right, that's, that's not quite true. When it comes to their merchandise, anyway, they're usually pretty good. Look at this guy. Right, don't send me back yet. So anyway, the Gen 7 one's pretty bad, but it's, it's nothing we haven't seen before. So how about Gen 8? Now we're looking for Ash. Where's Ash? You know, you go through it, it's made by the same people who made that last one. It's official product, and it's... And you get here, and it's... Um, there's Ash. I found him. It's it's the same stuff as the Kanto starters. Oh, are we going through the gen? No, because this is still just gem one. There's Ash. There's all this empty space of nothingness, no shadows. And then, um... Oh, I like this water effect. Hang on. Oh, boy. <laughs> here's, here's the other page. Uh... Is it a seek and find, or is it a game of spot the difference? Because the theme here is you gotta find Zoroark. The theme here is you gotta find Ash. In the find Zoroark one, Ash is like extremely obvious smack dab in the middle of the page on the boat because like, he's not the main guy you're looking for. You're looking for Zoroark. In the Where's Ash book, they uh, they moved him three feet to the right. All right, they, they made, they changed the uh, Tangrowth art also. Look at that. They kept the Zoroark. But they all they, so all they did. I'm sorry, Dialga. I'll stop yelling soon. All they did was change the tang growth and the ash. They called it a new book. I swear, the, the, these other pages are probably from other books that I just don't have. Probably because like I don't have any Gen Four books, and I know this company that made these two have actually made a lot. Just most of them were previous gens, and I already had previous gen ones from other companies, so I didn't want it. And the Starly has no outlines, but the Apom tail behind it does, and it's so much clearer even though it's behind, and that doesn't make any photography sense. There's a big page. This is late into the book, right? We've gone through others that were more cra This is supposed to be harder, but it's everything's big and easy. And I'm also pretty sure yeah, yeah, we got repeats here too. Once again, it is a game of spot the difference because the original has Ash in a very obvious spot because he's not the goal. You're supposed to be looking for Dwebble. So here, they replaced Ash with just a Snivy. Honestly, the anime would be significantly better if they just replaced Ash with a Snivy. But again, it's like someone was taking this photograph here and they told Ash, quick Ash, hide! And he just hid to the nearest possible place, which was just behind Scoliopede. Where's Ash? Where's Dialga? That's the real question. Take me back. I hate this future. 